when we're looking at anatomy, we're always looking at someone else's. So this is my left hand and this is my right hand. And so it is when we look at this model of the heart. We see the heart as two sides. The right side here, and this is the left side of the heart here. And in the middle, underneath this vascular bundle here, is the cardiac septum that's dividing the left heart from the right heart. So there's two sides. And the right side of the heart is pumping blood to the lungs, and the left side of the heart is pumping blood to the body. Now at the top of the heart here, remember we're on the right side now, this chamber here is the right atrium. The right atrium. And we see that that is receiving blood from two major vessels. This one up the top is the superior vena cava, bringing blood back from the top half of the body towards the heart. This is the inferior vena cava, bringing blood back up from the bottom half of the body. And actually, in there, there's another little tiny vein, a little tiny vein in there. I'm going to tip it over so you can see it. It's a little tiny vein right in there. That's the third vein that drains into the right atrium. And that is the drainage of the coronary sinus. And that's actually draining blood back from the veins of the heart itself. So superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, draining blood back from the body. And we notice that this vein is blue. And that vein is blue. That means it's carrying relatively deoxygenated blood from the body. It's actually not fully deoxygenated, but it's relatively deoxygenated. So it's clearer to have it in blue. From the atrium, the blood will go through this valve. A valve is a structure to ensure one-way flow of blood. So the blood can go from the atrium through to this chamber here, and this chamber is the ventricle, the right ventricle. So the blood will go through to the right ventricle. And then when the right ventricle contracts, that's going to close that valve off. And this valve actually has one, two, three cusps. So it's the tricuspid valve. It's the right atrioventricular valve, but it's tricuspid. And we notice it's held onto the wall of the heart via these tendinous cords, the cordae tendini. And they're attached to muscles here called papillary muscles. And all this trabeculated bit here, these are the trabeculi carni the little beams or the trabecular inside the heart. And that's important because when two smooth surfaces go together, there's a suction effect. And we don't want that in the heart, so it reduces the suction effect. And the blood flows through. So this right ventricle contracts. That closes this tricuspid valve. And can you see there's another valve there? It's also got three cusps. And because that, is, that vessel is leaving the heart, that's going to be an arterial vessel. And it's dark blue because it's carrying deoxygenated blood, which has returned from the body and gone through the right side of the heart. So that's taking blood to the lungs to be oxygenated. That is the pulmonary artery. It's very simple. An artery is any vessel carrying blood away from the heart. A vein is any vessel carrying blood towards the heart. So the superior and inferior vena cava are veins. The pulmonary artery, obviously, is an artery. It's carrying blood away from the heart. Now, this blood's going to circulate through the lungs. And it's going to get oxygenated as it goes through the lungs. And the blood from the lungs is drained via two large veins from each lung. So we have these four pulmonary veins draining blood back from the lungs. And we notice that these are veins, they're carrying blood towards the heart, but they're bright red because they're now carrying the oxygenated blood from the heart. And that's going to drain into this chamber here, which is the left atrium, the left upper chamber of the heart. From there, the blood is going to go through the left atrioventricular valve. 
So from the left atrium through to the left ventricle, through that valve, through there. These tendinous cords should be attached to the papillary muscles in there. And that valve actually only has two cusps. So if we look at this valve, there's a cusp there and there's a cusp there. This is the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. So this mitral valve is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And notice how much thicker the wall of the left ventricle is compared to the wall of the right ventricle. This is the myocardium, the muscular layer of the heart, and the right ventricle only has to pump blood to the lungs. Not very far, just from here to here. The blood pressure is relatively low. But the left ventricle has to pump blood to all of the body. So we need this thick myocardium to do that. And when the left ventricle contracts, that's going to close the mitral valve. And right under there, there's another valve and that valve is connected to this large vessel here. It's bright red and it's an artery. It's carrying all the blood from the left ventricle out to the body, coming out up here. And that, of course, is the aorta, the largest blood vessel in the body, the largest artery. So we have this myocardium that's contracting the right ventricle pumping blood to the lungs, the left ventricle pumping blood to the body. So it's reasonable to call the right side of the heart the lung pump. And it's reasonable to call the left side of the heart the body pump. But remember, of course, the right atrium is receiving blood from the body, the right ventricle is pumping to the lungs, and the left atrium is receiving blood via the pulmonary veins from the lungs, going through to the ventricle, pumping it to the body. So the right side is the lung pump, the left side is the body pump. It's all lined with very smooth tissue, the endocardium, to make sure it's all smooth. Round about the outside in life there would be the pericardial sac containing the whole heart. So there's all this active muscular contraction going on. The heart is going to move, pump in like that, and the ventricles are going to go in, the septum's going to pull it up, and at the same time it's going to twist, that's called cardiac twist. So it will twist. Looking at the apex, it's going to twist anticlockwise, and that rings the heart out, sort of rings the heart out, and greatly improves the efficiency of the ejection of the blood from the ventricles. So you can see that this muscular activity is going to need a lot of oxygen, a lot of nutrients. So the first two arteries that leave the aorta are the coronary arteries taking blood directly to the myocardium. So we have the right coronary artery on this side, taking blood to the right side of the heart. And we have the left coronary artery here. The left coronary artery is dividing into two, the circumflex going around the side to the lateral surface in the posterior surface, and this one going down the front, the left anterior descending. We don't want these blocked off because if these get blocked off, that could be a coronary thrombosis and that could cause a myocardial infarction. Part of this muscle could die. Very serious medical condition. We notice there's also cardiac veins carrying blood back. So this is a branch of the large or the greater cardiac vein, taking blood back here. This vein is the coronary sinus. There's also a lesser cardiac vein coming from the right side. And the coronary sinus vein here is draining blood back into, as we noticed before, that's draining blood back into the right atria, ready to go to the lungs to be oxygenated again. So there we have the main structures in the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava going into the right atrium, tricuspid valve, cardiac septum in the middle, 
That vessel there is the pulmonary artery, taking blood to the lungs. Mitral valve on this side, taking blood, allowing the blood to pass from the left atrium to the left ventricle, but not go back the way. We don't want it to regurgitate back the way. We only want it to go the right way. Pulmonary veins, taking blood into the, into the left atrium. The aorta carrying blood from the left ventricle. Mitral valve is the left atrioventricular valve. So they're the main structures to learn to begin with. And of course, they are regulating the flow of blood through the heart in one direction. The heart is essentially a pump, making sure the blood is pumped to the body and to the lungs and receiving the blood and this whole circulatory system is going all the time. Your heart started working from about six weeks after you were conceived, and of course it will keep working for all of your life. Quite an amazing structure, and to think it's only probably about the size of your own fist. <laughs>